This is home. Way 31 Hometown News starts now. Waking news this morning, the Franklin County Sheriff's Office is looking for a missing elderly man. This is Jerry Connum. He's 78 years old. He was last seen yesterday at Willie's gas station on Highway 243 and Highway 81. Mr. Cottom was driving a gray 2008 Ford F-150 extended cab pickup. He has dementia and he may not have known or he may have had an unknown male with him at the time. Now, if you see him or this missing truck, you are asked to call police. Meanwhile, it is a weather aware day. The snow has been coming down across the Tennessee Valley. This is video from earlier today. Indicator areas from the Shoals to Sand Mountain saw a scant dusting. Some bases did see a little bit more prompting some school closures. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Meredith Wood and I am Justin McFarland. It is a weather aware day here at Way 31 and we want to make sure that you and your family are safe. So let's take a look at the weather with Liz Cosgrove. She's got a look. Snow has stopped in many portions yeah. of the valley. Yeah, we're starting to see that snow slowly tapering off across the valley. I think the hardest hit places were up into northeast Alabama, like we thought. In Crossville, Alabama, we had some snow on the roadways earlier uh, this morning. Thank you, John, for sending that in. And we also had some snow, about two inches of it, up onto Brindley Mountain. Lisa Ward sent in this photo. I think that's where we got hit the hardest. We had those winds converging over the area. It picked up some of that moisture from the Tennessee River and hit parts of Morgan County and Marshall County near the river a little bit harder than what we expected, but everywhere else we got places near a dusting from Huntsville to Florence and our highest amounts were up in northeast Alabama like we originally thought. Still seeing a few snow showers building in over Jackson County and also DeKalb County right now. We're at 32 degrees for our weather watcher in North Coleman County stand. You've seen a few flurries, but no accumulation whatsoever into Coleman County throughout the day today. And also Gurley, we're at 33 degrees, had about an inch of snow at Karen's house, but now the snow is melting as temperatures are reaching above freezing right now into Huntsville and the roadways we're reporting temperatures into the mid 30s out near the Shoals, the same throughout most of southern Tennessee and also into the Athens, Decatur and Huntsville areas. So any snow you might see might start to slowly melt and we're looking to rise above the freezing mark before our second band of snow showers builds in for this afternoon. We'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes. We'll send it back over to Meredith and Justin. Thank you so much, Liz. As the snow continues to fall in many parts of the valley, we asked some of you to send us your snow photos. Here are a few from uh, some some of the people from across the valley, as you can see, the snow got rather deep depending on where you went across some parts of the Tennessee Valley today. Yeah, very pretty. Actually, we love to see a little bit of the white snow there on the ground. We love to see some more snow pictures whenever it happens this season. You can send us to send them to us using social media with the hashtag Way Photos, or you can email them at photos at waytv.com. We are keeping a very close eye on the weather conditions across the Tennessee Valley, especially some of those slick roads out there, which led to some school closures. Now we are taking a big look at this with Way 31 meteorologist Will Harkins. He's live this morning in Huntsville on Memorial Parkway, where some of the elevated portions were closed off and on. Will, how are things out there right now? Well, it's been kind of spitting some snow flurries out here for about the past 15 or 20 minutes. As you can see, though, the parkway is back open. Now, they did close down elevated portions north of University earlier, but it seemed like once the snow died down, they reopened those same elevated portions of the roadways. Now, with the wind that we're seeing, as well as the current temperatures uh, that we have on the roadway surfaces, the risk of black ice right now is not really there. Uh, and the wind will help to dry out those roadways as well. So you're not going to have to worry too much about some travel troubles as we start heading into the late afternoon hours and worrying too much about those uh, uh, slick spots forming on the roadways. But that won't be the case for everywhere in the valley. So make sure you do keep a close eye on the roads and drive safely. Live from the Parkway, Will Harkins, Way 31, Hometown News. Thank you, Will. Things looking good there on Memorial Parkway. Thankfully, Way 31's Christine Flores is live right now in Decatur. Christine, what are roads looking like in your area? I'm here on 6th Avenue near the Beltline in Decatur. Now, as you can see, just a couple of snow flurries are falling here. Definitely a different scene than earlier today where that snow caused some icy patches on the road and even caused a closure. Highway 231 is still closed from Whitesburg Bridge all the way up to Bradley Mountain. Now, Morgan County 911 Director Ryan Welty telling us the road was just too slick for travel. So if you are headed in that direction, be sure to take an alternative route. All other surrounding areas like 
Limestone and Lawrence County do not have any major reports at this time, but they are advising drivers to take their time if they are out on the road today. So be sure to stay with Way 31 both on air and online as we bring you continuing coverage on this weather. Live in Decatur, Christine Flores, Way 31 Hometown News. Thank you so much, Christine. Now we're going to check in with Way 31's Jeff Martin. He is in the Sand Mountain area in Gunnersville. Jeff, how are things looking down there? Well, actually, guys, in the past about 15 minutes, the wind has really picked up. We've got a lot more flurries. But the most important thing here is that the roads are still very slick. And because the temperature is very close to freezing here, if it stays like that for a while, we could see even more slick roads. You need to be careful out here if you're driving on bridges, overpasses, or really anywhere near the Tennessee River. Live in Gunnersville, Jeff Martin, Way 31, Hometown News. Good advice. We want everyone to remember that no matter where you happen to be driving. And for the very latest on weather alerts, you can check out Weather Nation. That's 31.2. It's available over the air and on several television providers that you see right there on your screen. And for tips on how to stay safe in weather of any kind, you can check out our severe weather guide. That's on WayTV.com. It's under the weather tab. Well, new details this midday as the Lauderdale County Deputy Randall McCrary got home from the hospital this morning after being shot last Wednesday. The shooting happened on Ridge Avenue in Florence. According to the Sheriff's Department, Deputy McCrary was taking involuntary commitment papers to 35-year-old Timothy Murphy when officials say Murphy opened fire on the deputies, hitting McCrary. Authorities say McCrary then returned fire. Now, both were flown to Huntsville Hospital. Officials say McCrary was shot in his chest and had to have surgery to remove his spleen gallbladder and appendix. Meanwhile, neighbors tell Weathered and One that Murphy has emotional issues, according to officials. He will be served commitment papers and go to a mental health facility after he has recovered. He, though, is still in Huntsville Hospital, but is expected to be okay. Well, Way 31's Brecken Terry spoke with McCrary as he was leaving the hospital earlier today with an escort of Lauderdale County Sheriff's deputies. Brecken, what did he have to say? Good evening, guys. Well, Deputy McCrary told me he is ready to get back to work both in the field and in the classroom. McCrary is a Lauderdale County Sheriff's deputy and the public safety instructor at the Limestone County Career Technical Center. He says he is thankful to everyone who has prayed for him and his family during this time. Now, McCrary got an escort by the Lauderdale County Sheriff's deputies to his home in Limestone County. McCrary says he was standing just one day after surgery and says God was his shield the night he got shot. I'm ready to go serve the people of Lauderdale County and get back out at work, you know, doing what I love doing. And I'm also ready to go back to my students in the classroom. And they, they've come over and with the, the tremendous amount of law enforcement that's came and visited uh, my students have as well and uh, it's been some touching times with them and I mean I'm ready to get back to both. McCrary was not wearing his bulletproof vest at the time he was shot because the sheriff says it is up to the deputy whether or not they want to wear it. Now Lauderdale County Sheriff Rick Singleton says they are going over that policy and will probably make it protocol for all deputies to wear vests on all calls. Now you can tune in at 5 o'clock tonight to see what McCrary had to say about the mental health issue in the state of Alabama since he was serving involuntary commitment papers to a person who allegedly has a uh, mental health issues. Live in Huntsville, Brecken Terry, Way 31, Hometown News. Thank you, Brecken. Looking forward to that report tonight at 5. Well, your voice, your vote today is the New Hampshire primary, and it's a critical moment in the race for the White House. Candidates are making the final push for support right now as votes come in across that state. John Carl has the latest. Thank you. After his loss in Iowa this morning, frontrunner Donald Trump has something to prove. And then you're going to win here in New Hampshire? If we don't win here and we don't win elsewhere, then we're not going to win as a country. Trump holds a double-digit lead headed into the first primary of 2016. Time because this is sort of our final love fest, all right? But New Hampshire voters are famously fickle. I feel like people shouldn't underestimate New Hampshire independent voters. So many undecided, at the 11th hour, candidates are putting on the hard sell. I think voters here realize I give the Republican Party the best chance to win. I'm as conservative as anyone in this field. If there's anything that I can do, it's the ability to get people to work together. So less than 24 hours to go? I know, I know. I, I, hate, I hate election days. Hey, how's it feel? How are you going to do? 
I think we're going to do really well. On the Democratic side, it's Bernie Sanders with a big lead. The people of New Hampshire will have the opportunity to say that enough is enough. Hillary Clinton is fighting hard for New Hampshire votes right to the end. You don't want to overpromise. The last thing we need is promises that can't be met. We'll see how it all turns we out. Will. And by the way, ABC News will have special coverage throughout the evening right here on Way 31 to keep you updated on the New Hampshire primaries.